Yo guys, Coach Theo here on Common Sense. Today I'm going to tell you how to control anxiety and fear. Maybe I should be a little bit more relaxed for this, but I just smashed the back work and I just pumped, quite literally, see that vein, uh, but I'll try to contain myself. Before I go on, I just want to ask you to like and comment already now for the sake of the algorithm supporting me and the channel helping more people see it i really appreciate it guys and i just want to remind you that at the same time i put out this video and i almost always put out videos on weekdays 5 p.m central european time i also have live streams on sundays where i will answer all your questions about well anything really but you know anything related to this channel fitness fasting losing weight killing muscle mental health all that shit so please tune in on sunday okay so this video would really be about emotional control. It's just that fear and anxiety happen to be emotions that a lot of people wish they could control, right? But you could really apply this to any sort of negative emotion like anger, sadness, grief, or whatever. But I'll be focusing here on fear and anxiety. And notice that I'm saying control, control, not take away, cure. It's control, because that's of course what a lot of people wish, like, oh, I wish. Uh, I didn't get anxiety. I wish I didn't get afraid. But the thing is, all emotions serve a purpose. That's why I did this with negative. Like, yes, we might have a preference for which emotions we prefer that feels the best for us, but they also have a purpose. They are there to tell you something. It's just that if we haven't learned emotional control, uh, they might take over us. It might spiral out of control. It might have to like experience them more than what is actually beneficial to us. But you know, one of the things I list at the end of my videos that this channel is about is stoicism. And stoicism is not about denying or suppressing or somehow getting rid of emotions is quite the opposite. It's about acknowledging and feeling them fully, but not like letting them take over. So I'm going to talk now about fear and anxiety. I'm going to have some personal examples. Um, but so I'm going to go into a little bit how I figured out how this happened for me. But there are many reasons that could lead to you having like a sort of fight or flight response in certain situations. Like it could be different situations for different people or also different underlying reasons. So, you know, um, I'll, I'll go in as little in specifics on my uh, mine as possible. I just want to say that mine is just an example, but then we're going to come to like how you deal with the actual emotion uh, is the same thing for everyone. So for me, as I, my big problem was, you know, flight, fight or flight, like whatever situation for you where you just feel like, I just want to get out of here, I don't want to be here, could be for me it was stage fright, like having some kind of presentation or something like that when all the attention is directed towards me. But it could be just some kind of social, general social anxiety for you. You might have it when you're just around certain people, certain situations, it doesn't matter. But for me, it was stage fright. And it might surprise you when you see on this channel what, what a natural kind of speaker I am. And I want to, I want to, I'm like made to be the center of attention, uh, speak, reach out with a message of some kind. And as a kid, I didn't really have any problems with it. I just knew like, yeah, yeah, I'll read out loud for the entire school, uh, you know, from this book. I'm good at reading. I'm good at doing this. And then we don't have to go into exactly how, but a trauma led to me having, like from my teens or so, a very different kind of response. That when I knew I'm about to like uh, hold a speech, have some kind of presentation or sing, I went to um, choir school. So either if I, you know, some kind of solo or if I'm singing in a smaller group when my voice is more exposed like that, I just got so very, very insanely nervous about it. And what I figure out for me, the reason, that this is not really the main point, but for me, I uh, realized that it had, was about the fear of being seen, you know, because I could often be calm, funny, cool, charming guy, like cool, I don't know how much I think now that that old version of me was, but you know, uh, I, that's how I come up when I'm around people. And I had a fear of being seen in that state when I'm nervous, when I'm really nervous, it's kind of meta. I, I'm nervous about being nervous in a sense, because I feel like if people see this part of me, they'll be like, oh, so that's who he really is. And they will abandon me, reject me and abandon me for who I am. That's what I'm really afraid of. I know now today. But okay, so the problem, what I did wrong and what people generally do wrong, we're talking about emotional control, is we try to actually control it as in we think we can like, ah, no, this needs to go away. No, I, I can't be feeling like this. Ah, not when I'm doing this, this needs to go away. But the thing is, it can't. 
it, it can't and you're just going to be creating a negative feedback loop. Like, can you recognize this? If you, if you can relate to some kind of stage fright or you just have some situation where you get nervous, uh, afraid like that, can you relate to if it somehow happened when you weren't prepared for it? You just find yourself, oh, every, everyone is looking at me and I'm talking now, I'm ho holding a speech, that then it's not really a problem. But when you know beforehand, like at this time, I'm gonna talk about this, I'm gonna have this presentation in school or at my job or whatever, because now you have all this time to think about it and you're like, oh, I can't be nervous. No, 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 I, I won't be able to do my best if I get nervous. Oh, the other people, they're, they're gonna do this, they're just gonna like it, blah, blah, blah. And you're trying to fight it, but you can't. You can't, that's, that's the, you're creating this negative feedback loop where you notice this feeling, you try to suppress it, you can't, then you get even worse, you feel even worse because shit, I can't. No, it's getting worse, no, it can't. And then all of a sudden you built up this huge feeling instead when you try to control it in that way, thinking you can just somehow just remove it like that. But do you know what you're really supposed to do? That I learned, because you that have been watching this channel, I of course went through this whole episode with panic attacks when I get a flight or flight response, just uh, even at home by myself sometimes, but very, just going out basically, just being among people. And I just had to learn through this. What you're supposed to do, you're just supposed to allow it to be that way. As soon as you notice, I'm nervous, even if I'm quite nervous, you know, okay, okay, that's fine. That's all you do, you accept it immediately. And that's how you stay in control because now it, it's, it's not supposed to go, like a little bit nervous, this is what people say, that it doesn't sound good to someone that struggles a lot with stage fright, for instance. That, ah, oh, but a little bit of nerves, it just makes you focus, it just makes you sharp, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, nah, but I fucking freak out, it doesn't help. But now, when you're not denying this, maybe you're getting nervous because you're actually like, yeah, it matters, how I perform matters. But now, when you have just little nervousness, that might not be a super comfortable feeling, it, it, when that's all it is though, when it's time to act, you're just sharper from it, right? So this is what I learned. I'm going to give you an example and tell you how I've applied this since then. Um, so wh when I was working in a gym still a few years ago, um, I, I had open, you know, I was a personal trainer, but sometimes I stood in a like, reception uh, on, on weekends like that, or maybe in the summer. I don't remember now, but anyway. And uh, we're supposed to have a like, couple group training classes and it's the same instructor that's going to come to the gym and uh, have it. It's one like, I don't remember, but some kind of like strength uh, slash conditioning class in, in a room. And then it's a running class afterwards. And so this um, instructor is sick. I get to know like with very short notice. And yeah, it must have been summer because it was very hard to find a replacement. And I realized that I might have to do this, you know, and I have never done this. And it's on so many levels, you know, like, I don't know the choreography kind of for the first class. I don't know how the technology works with the headset I'm supposed to use and the running class. Even though I don't run much, of course I can run, but doing like intervals and like talking and keeping everyone excited. <laughs> uh, there's so many things that I have not done here that I realized I might just have to like in one hour, just do whatever I can to do this. And so I notice this nervous feeling because of course it is my stage fright thing. Yeah, I probably still, I have a small, less of a problem with it overall, but I get nervous for things like that. And now especially, you, you see, it's a situation I've never been in. But what I did then, because I learned this, I applied this emotional control. Like, oh shit, I feel nervous about this. Fine, let's uh, just do whatever I can. How what do I need to solve it? And I start looking up, like I go in on like the gym's uh, like class information. I'm actually watching like the uh, typical workout. And what, the, what are the intervals like? How, um, how many? I just start uh, doing all of this and I'm feeling quite nervous, but it never gets worse, you know. And then so right before it was time, to do this, uh, someone actually showed up that could fill in for me. And by that point, I was kind of like, eh. you know, <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to the challenge because I had a healthy amount of nervousness now. But if I had done, gone about my old ways, like, no, 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 shit, I, I, I can't do this. Like, I can't possibly do this. Like, no, no, I've never done this. Oh, the people are going to see, uh, they're going to judge me for not doing it well, or they're going to see, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I would have felt terrible. 
But now, because I kept in check, I was actually even excited to do it and got disappointed when someone else showed up to do it. But of course, because they had done it before, I still kind of had to let them do it. But so do you see what the point here is? Uh, you controlling emotions, it's not what you think. It's not trying to deny them. It's not like trying to, you can't control them like that. Controlling them means allowing them, allowing them to be there, just flow through you, and then they'll become worse than that, okay? But so, I, I said I was gonna give you some additional tips, because this is sort of just a spiritual mental, how do you treat your inner world like that? But it's really, when it comes to stuff like fear and anxiety, these are, of course, stress states. And so, it's all the typical things that are gonna help you a lot. If you build strength, if you uh, exercise in general, really, exercise hard, you're gonna be more stress resistant. If you do stuff like sauna, intense sauna sessions, you're gonna be more stress resistant. You do stuff like cold showers or cold plunges, you know, where the body, when you can kind of feel something like freaking out, like, like in this case, just physically, but you uh, like practice this and you build this ability to stay uh, controlled and calm while in a stressed state, this will carry over to these kinds of situations as well. I've been amazed sometimes when I've been like quite anxious for other reasons sometimes in my life, you know, uh, and I've been amazed sometimes, like how can I be acting so calmly when I'm feeling so very, very uh, strongly on the inside, you know. It's of course, what, the first what I've learned, how you have to deal with it, just allow the emotion to be there, let it flow, but also just from this lifestyle, and all the well, fasting should be mentioned too, all this hormesis, all this positive stress, just makes you a tank. But it, even when you're not able to do this inner practice as well, you sort of have an armor, you know, that's what you could call it. So yes, guys, please like and comment. Like I said, if you haven't already started a video, also for helps more people <laughs> see it, the channel, find the video, so it's very much appreciated. I coach you guys in stuff like this too. That's what you gotta realize. My f Uncommon Sense Fitness programs, it's not just about building a jacked and stacked physique. It's about building yourself to the strongest individual you can be on every level. So if you're interested, please reach out on Instagram or email. It's all in the description below. Uh, I'll tell you about the different options. Uh, consider becoming a member or otherwise supporting the channel also in the description and please subscribe for more content about fitness, fasting, losing weight, building muscle, self-improvement, stoicism, mental health, philosophy, spirituality, mindset. It is a mindset, guys. Don't deny the emotion. Feel it. And then just act. Peace.